<laughs> Good morning, everyone. So um, I'm very glad to be here to present this data on behalf of uh, Laure Mouton, my colleague who couldn't make it and uh, who was a study director for the data that we're going to share. So um, this, da this data are about the early protection against foot and mouth disease virus seven days post-vaccination, and the uh, animal phase was carried out at the uh, Fahreningen Bio-Veterinary Research, and I agree with Fedra, that is a mouthful, <laughs> and, and uh, so the formerly CVI, and, that, uh, and the lab phase was done at the R&D uh, lab in Lelystad from Merial. Uh, so one of the uh, one of the important things that we know that FMD virus can spread really rapidly, and one of the key feature for an effective vaccination is to have a short onset of immunity. So how short is short is arguable. What we wanted to do in this study is to assess the efficacy of aftervax pure DOE vaccine and the protection seven days post vaccination. And the thing that we wanted to do here was to. Uh, do that in a challenge model that mimicked as much as possible uh, the real life situation. Yesterday, uh, during this parallel session, there were discussions about uh, how representative experimental design were about field trials. And the way we tried to do that was to do that through an intranasal challenge. There is a lot of, uh, so I'll get back to that in a second, but there is a lot of publication of different ways to do that. So uh, I'll discuss that in the study design. Oh, I'm missing the ahead as well. Anyway, um, so as part of the study design, we had 20 cattle, so 10 animals, 10 vaccinated, 10 controls, so which is uh, more than what you have in a standard PD-50, so that gave us a, a bigger range of, uh, of information. So obviously the uh, animals were in high containment. And the vaccine was a uh, double oil emulsion after vaccine GOE with a standard uh, payload, and it was a monovalent omenista. Uh, so, still study design. So, uh, we had the vaccination, two milliliter by subcutaneous route. And here we have um, the device that we use for the intranasal. So, interesting, so there are different ways to do, to do this type of challenge. We could have uh, um, spread direct shedding and so on. What we wanted to do here is really to control the quantities that we would be giving to the animals. And that's, um, this device is called uh, mucosal, Mm, uh, mucosal atomization device and allows uh, uh, nebulization directly within the nostril. So you have a good control compared to mask, you have a good control of the dose you're giving to the animal, and it's more representative than the intradermal uh, tongue, um, tongue challenge. So the way it was done, so we had a 2.5 milliliter in each nostril, uh, twice one, one hour apart, so a total of 10 milliliter. Up. And then in terms of follow-up, um, we had, so basically the most important thing was the uh, specific FM design, so it had to be done under sedation, so it was done four and eight days post-challenge, and then we had the final uh, readout at 14 days. Um, we, we wanted the study to be sufficiently long, so 14 days, because we I, actually that was our first time where we were using this device for, uh, for the challenge, so we weren't sure how, how long it would take to have the, the, challenge, uh, the challenge effect. Uh, and in addition to the standard FMD sign, so uh, vesic uh, vesicles on the, uh, on the mouse mm, and, and foot, <laughs> uh, we had the follow-up of the rectal temperature daily for the 14 days, general clinical signs, uh, including, um, including loss of appetites, uh, mucosal signs, uh, salivary uh, drooling, and um, the uh, posture of the animal. And uh, the important thing was uh, the virus isolation, uh, just in order to, uh, well, one thing was to assess the severity of the challenge with this natural route of challenge, and also to have an assessment of the potential of excretion. Um, in, for, to, to evaluate the onset of immunity. Uh, so it's not here, and we, we had also some follow-up on VNT just to check on the vaccination take and to see where we would be seven days post vaccination on VNT. Uh, it's not here. Uh, we had some follow-up on the safety just after, uh, after vaccination, uh, so just normal temperature and clinical signs and local reaction. So there was nothing unusual, and it's not the topic here, but it was done as well. Um, so the first results are the rectal temperature. So as you can see, we had a nice peak of hypothermia in the unvaccinated controls after the intranasal challenge. 
and we had no marked increase of the rectal temperature in the vaccinated groups. Um, so this is a specific FMD lesion. So compared to what we we didn't know how long it would take to have the F, uh, to have the challenge effect visible, and apparently it's a it's about the same timing as what you have in a standard PD50, or not, not that much different. At four days, we had already six out of ten controls at, at signs, some on the head only, and three on the head only, and three on, uh, with already generalization. By day eight, all of them had generals, uh, general signs, so all, all the feet, and at day 14, at the end of the study, uh, all, the, all the controls had uh, generalized uh, FMD on all four feet. Uh, so on the here, what you have, it had, we had only one of the vaccinated that had a D8 uh, vesicle on the tongue, actually, and associated to some drooling. So, well, this is pretty straightforward. In that case, we didn't take into account the uh, the local uh, reaction because it was linked to the challenge uh, challenge thing. So we only considered generalization, as in a PD50 model. So obviously, uh, we had a complete protection of the foot lesion and generalization of the FMD after control. And uh, as the, uh, considering the, the severity of the challenge is confirmed in the control group. So this, this was an additional um, assessment that we did on clinical, just as a complement, in order with the composite global clinical scores that took into account temperature, um, so the clinical sign, general clinical sign I was mentioning earlier, appetite, um, because I like uh, drawing and posture. And uh, the, the FMD lesion score, which obviously had the highest uh, weight in this uh, global clinical signs. And uh, well, it's well in line uh, with, uh, with what we've seen with the, uh, with the lesions and with the highly significantly different distribution of this global clinical score between the vaccinated, the vaccinated and the control group. And that's the same for each of the component of the global clinical score. So I think this is, these are also the, um, the most uh, interesting data from this study. So what we had is that we have a, in both cases, we had a peak of varium, varium, in the controls five days post uh, challenge, and it started at D3. So uh, for the vaccinate, we couldn't uh, isolate any virus in the blood. And from in the mouse swab, so it was cotton, cotton swabs uh, that were done uh, daily after challenge. And here, what we see is that as as was expected, considering the route of challenge, we have a minor, uh, a minor isolation in the vaccinate, while in the control it's, it's really high. Uh, what is interesting is that it's seven of the ten vaccinated do, um, has had this isolation, but we still have this huge difference. So, in, so we have, of course, because it's an intranasal challenge and because of the proximity with the with the mouse. Uh, presence of the virus, but it's, we have a, a highly significant reduction in the extent and the duration of, of, this, uh, of the virus presence in the vaccinate, whereas you have a, a, a high one in the controls. So just for information in the VNTs, at D7 we didn't expect to have very high results, but we wanted to see where we were. So we had some, some uh, in most animals, I mean half of the animals approximately in the vaccinate showed a clear uh, seroconversion, but not all of them. And um, in other studies that we've done, we know that at D4 VNT we don't see anything. At D at 10 days post, uh, post vaccination, generally you have all the animals that have seroconverted. And uh, of course, after challenge, everyone seroconverts. So, um, in conclusion, this study allowed to show um, this um, positive effect of, this, of the vaccination after, after challenge, seven days post vaccination. We had a complete reduction of the number of foot lesion a significant reduction of the severity of the clinical sign, a complete protection against viremia, and a highly also significant reduction of the viral expression, uh, which is of particular interest for field, for, uh, for field extrapolation, and an early on onset of the serological response against Omanisa. And I just want to thank again all the technical staff for 
oh my god, I have to say it again, <laughs> from the formerly CVI and from the, from the Imperial R&D Lab. Are there any questions for Marianne? Uh, thank you. Now, I was wondering uh, the uh, the early immune response that you have. Yeah, cellular. Is related to IgM. Measure. No, yes, no, not, not in that case. And actually, okay. uh, I was kind of expecting after the session today that also we, we didn't measure uh, either uh, interfere or any other marker of, uh, of cellular uh, immunity. Although we know that, as it, and anyway, that shows with the VNT, we know that there are other mechanisms that are at stake. But we didn't measure it at the time. Um, one reason for that is that we're also doing that, as Martin was saying, for sometimes for regulatory purposes. And right now, these are just these are information that we don't exactly know how to use uh, in, a, in, a, in a dossier setting. It's just additional information, but that's definitely something that we're going to look into. Okay, I have one question for you. Yeah. Hi. Uh, and that's also related to this neutralizing antibody uh, response at day seven. You showed that they had some antibodies uh, yeah. already, but of course not the same amount as you, as you would have at day 14 or day 21, mm -hmm. and also not with the same correlative protection. But was there any correlation between the titer and the general clinical score or whatever? They were all protected, but... Well, it's difficult to say because they were all protected. Uh, that being said, we have also done another study with, uh, with uh, other... Um, uh, with other similar things, it's it's very difficult to correlate at this point of time because you have the inherent viability of the VNT uh, already, the individual reaction of the animal, which is very marked at the very at the beginning. So to correlate this with the uh, with the challenge is not uh, is not easy. Uh, hi, uh, this is nice, uh, nice results. I just uh, possibly I missed the information. Just I want to know: is it a vaccine, a high potency vaccine, or, or, or it's uh, no? yes? It's uh, it was a six PD fifty vaccine. Six PD fifty. Thank you. Okay, sorry, we have to move on. Oh, if, if it is a short question, yeah, yeah? it's okay. just a comment. Actually, uh, most probably uh, that's the ICM that is uh, the, the one that yeah. is responsible for the clearance. That's oh. what we have Most seen uh, in vaccinated animals and also in, in infected animals. The ICM is the one that clears the virus when it's infected, and that's the one probably that is preventing the, the spread of the virus within the, the animal. So just a comment. Okay, thank you very much. Well, thank you. We move on.